Good morning, folks. Preemptive strike damage control. We have a vertical filament cresting a limb, which means at some point today the magnetics holding up that billions of tons of plasma will carve out a coronal cavity and a sphere shape at the outer edge of the filament. You will begin seeing UFO claims about a sphere sucking on the sun. Don't be fooled. Google coronal cavity to learn more. Okay, we're going around the world here with GOES, Meteorosat, and a few others to remind you to keep track of your local alerts. If you have to, you can pull the links from the description box here. Veteran watchers doing their own forecasting, remember to locate the air mass convergence associated with the low pressure systems. This is Landsat 8, shot of Princess Charlotte Bay, with a lot to see on the surface and just below. Figured it would be a good way to fulfill the necessary calm to start the day. Why is that necessary? Because while the earthquake watch began with just one 6.5 three days ago, Yesterday, L waves were ripped across the planet by a number of large tremors. Starting with a 6.0 in New Zealand, south of the Kermadec Islands, followed by a 6.2 in Greece, downgraded from a 6.3 but no damage reports. 6.5 hit Nicaragua, again, luckily there appears to be no damage. This morning we're trending upward already with Antarctic instability and yet another above average American rumble, this one in Mexico. Gamma ray burst took a few days off, but Pavo, way south in the sky, popped one as yesterday's news was processing. Go figure. Solar wind from ACE appears to be relatively quiet, which is a good thing because my favorite magnetometers in Gakona are still down. USGS, Canadian, and Finnish all show quiet systems. Only noteworthy occurrence was an electron snap just before the quakes began. Folks, flaring has become more numerous, but still struggling to get out of the B range. Quick catch up. For nearly two years, we have tracked an exact matching phenomenon witnessed by the Maunder scientists hundreds of years ago, where the Earth either kills the sunspots or puts them to sleep. This only follows the Earth and has stuck with us for more than one orbit around the Sun, so alignments or incoming objects would not be the cause. Speculation about this is a good topic for our site forums on suspiciousobservers.org, which is fixed now with the gray background to save your eyes. Apologies about that. The bigger site is still under construction, but you can now make groups and actually read what you're saying to each other, working on the private group option for you as well. Back to the sunspots. Departing bunch may fire, but we have to focus on the incoming active regions. Each has a beta polarity, and down south, each appears to be mixing magnetically, with the exception of the lone alpha up top, but the only complex mixing is down and furthest from us right now. The others would need more central umbras developing between the leading and trailing ones. Earth's primary magnetic connection, it's not grainy, it's clear today, indicating that our connection is on the Earth-facing disk rather than the backside. Umbral field is unquestionably open, and the quake watch has already hit successfully with four big ones in three days. Coronal hole shots for you, a rare look at 94 angstroms, filaments popping around, and a close-up of the new spots to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.